This uh, component is expecting the modules as a property. So let's let's uh, create a state variable that can be used globally for from for everyone. Now, for instance, what we'd like to be able to do is is uh, something uh, as follows, right? We we would like to create a some kind of finite state machine uh, that can calculate our state for us, right? And you know, call it maybe um, module you know finite state machine, and um, and um, and this finite state machine will be a function that can take us argument the current state take this argument, some action, and based on that, it can calculate what the next state should be. All right, so for now, let's, uh, let's have it uh, return a, uh, a, static, a static state, you know, return some, um, uh, some initial state, just return the default state, right? and let's initialize this state to be something like const initial state. Right? The initial state might be that I have a, sta a, a, a state variable called module. <laughs> And in here, I can have any number of state variables that I want to keep track of, right? And, and by default, for now, it'll be those that array of courses, right? So this of, of modules, sorry. We'll have uh, underscore ID, right? That it's uh, equal to one, two, three. And the title will be module one. And you can have a couple of these. And there's module two, module three, right? And then we can initialize the uh, what the uh, finite state machine would return with our initial state, right? And right now it's it's returning this hard-coded state that is always equal to this initial state, yes? So somehow we would like to feed whatever this, this module uh, a finite state machine produces, feed it into the module list component, right? And um, and for now it'll be just static. Right now we don't have anything, right? Our, our, our module list is just empty. So how, how can we do that? Well, Redux has uh, allows us to do this, yes? Uh, we are. We'll, we will do the server a little later. We'll, we'll first do do this uh, this this simple example, right? Yeah, and then we'll add the server uh, towards the end. Right. So we have the the module finite state machine, and we want to feed it. We want to feed this into into this. So the way we're going to do that is we're going to use Redux, and Redux has a um, uh, it's, uh, the 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 abstraction that Redux produces it creates for us is that uh, it's going to keep track of all the states. Right, that the that the that the finite state machine generates, and then it'll produce uh, provide those states to to the rest of all the components, and then they're free to map, you know, which what do they what do they want, right? And the way it does it is by creating what is called a store. The store is going to be the, a repository of all the states, right, that the application has ever been in, right? It's going to keep track of a history of all the states, right? Redux follows a different philosophy about state management, right? <laughs> Uh, up to this point, the way we've been managing state is by mutating the state. Right? If we add a state, if we add a module, what we do is that we append to an array that already exists. So we change the array that it was already there by adding to that array. If we delete, uh, we remove a, a, an element from that same array. So we mutate the state, yes? Redux takes a different approach. Redux says, no, I'm not going to mutate the state. Instead, I will always create a brand new state, and that will be the current state. Right, so, so I will not throw away the, the old state and mutate it and change it. Instead, I'll keep track of it, right? and, uh, and I'll just create just a brand new state. What this buys me is that I could perhaps you know, use my history of the states to perhaps implement things such as undo. Undo would be as simple as, as traversing right, my history of all the states backwards and forwards in time right, and changing this, the, 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 the rendering based on these new states. Right? I can always feed my new my any any of those states into my application and it would and it would re-render displaying you know how the application was you know three steps uh, uh, backwards in time make sense so the store is uh, maintains all the states particularly we're going to be interested in the last state the very last state most commonly yes so the store maintains all the states so how do we create a state we use creates create store create store creates the store and it, it takes as argument the finite state machine Right, takes into account it, it, as argument the finite state machine to produce all these states. All right, all right. So once we have the store, we can uh, we can provide the store to everybody else uh, that's going to want to read the state by using the provider. Provider is a uh, component that is uh, provided by the React Redux library. This is the glue between the Redux library and the React library. Right, this is what makes the, the them uh, interact. 
uh, so we load that in. Here's the store. Wants to know what the store is, all right? And then we we um, uh, we wrap our entire component uh, with the provider. That means that everybody in the body of the provider has access to that store now, right? So this store is kind of like a a, a, a global variable within the context of that provider. Make sense? All right. Uh, now. Now we're doing it for the course editor, right? And again, if this were a, an industrial setting and you would be doing this for real, uh, more commonly the provider would live at the top, uh, the very, very top of your application at the root, right? It would, it would surround maybe app, okay? And then, and then the store would be available anywhere in, the, in your application. Here, we are, we are instead providing a lower uh, abstraction, right? Which is a component of the, 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 the course editor. Make sense? Anyway. Uh, so we've provided the, the store. Let's uh, let's now see how um, you know we're, we're still we still we still haven't been able to uh, add the, the the modules here. Let's see now how module list would would extract right uh, this modules. Basically, what we want to be able to do is map this state that pres presumably my finite state machine is returning. We want to map this state variable. We want to map it to this this modules property. Let's see how we can do that. 